Rocket Pat here. Alright guys, it's another day in the jungle. And we're working on different things. Uh, trying to watch the Daytona 500, but somehow it keeps getting uh, rained on over there in Florida. Yeah. So anyway, this is what I got going on. I'm working on the steering column for the four, or the 54. Uh, got a, uh, went and made myself a double D here. Got some U-joints and stuff like that. Uh, got a bearing. I found this piece of pipe. I need to take it over to my buddy's place and uh, run it on the, uh, the lathe and take a little material out of here so it'll sink down in there and then I'll weld it to the tube. All right, but this is what this video is about. This is to help our buddy Andy out over at Andy's doghouse on relocating his radiator. Uh, he's having a little bit of difficulty. He's working it out, but he still ain't got it 100% right. So I figured it'd be easier instead of typing out a long list of this, that, and the other, uh, I'd just make a video and maybe he'll uh, understand. And if it helps you, there's one thumb. There's the other two thumbs up. All right, so what you need to do, Andy, is you need to put your lower core support back into your truck, okay? That's what's going to hold up your front clip and give everything tightness where it bolts down here to the center, okay? You need to have that back in. Don't leave it out, all right? What you need to do is you see right here, there's no top cap on this core support now on this particular car all there was was a bolt that went from here or a bar that went from there to there there never was a top cap so originally this radiator sat on this side and it pushed in so let's go over here and look at the original radiator this is the original radiator out of that car so by it sitting flat up against that deal, it put the radiator way forward into this zone up against the uh, engine fan, okay? Now, I, I've got a different radiator that I'm using, and how I relocated mine was I moved it to the other side of the core support. So instead of it being bolted to this side of the core support, it's now bolted to this side of the core support. I cut out this section down here so that I could sink the radiator further this direction because you got a million miles back here, okay? So we got all that space back this direction. So I took it from this side of the core support, moved it to this side of the core support. Now yours is bolted on this side of the core support. What I want you to do is bolt it to this side of the core support, not this side this side of the lower core support on your truck okay by taking that and moving it way back in here you're going to gain three to four inches of space okay now that may not work for you because of the way that it's built the way yours is built is going to be more like let's say we took this and we turned it around okay Yours is made like this, so that this is at the engine side of the core support. Now, by trying to move it to the other side of the core support, you're going to find that it's pushing it too far this way to take care of that upper core support that has that piece that's this thick that you can cut out, but it's still going to be too far. Now, how you're going to solve that? This is the old radiator from the 1947 Chevrolet pickup truck that I did. When I got the new radiator, what I found was I was way too close to the 235 versus the 216. So what I had to do was I had to take this off the radiator. Okay? And how you do that is this is a steel piece that goes around your radiator to hold the top tank to the bottom tank. Okay? and to hold the core support in, the core in, okay? Now it doesn't flow water. You can un, there's a weld here, a weld there, a weld there, and a weld there, and that whole side thing will come off, okay? But what you wanna do is you wanna take a grinder and you wanna go down this run right here with it. And what you're looking for, you're looking for these little spot welds, okay? You see that little spot weld? There's another little spot weld right there. 
up here there's one right there i don't know if we're going to get a good there it is there's another one there's another one there's another one and so on down this thing you're going to find spot welds what you want to do at that point is you want to go over there to princess auto if they're in, in kanakistan okay and you're going to want to get you one of these this is a spot weld drill okay they got them over there well i don't know where they're going to have them at your place okay but in harbor freight they're over there by the uh they're in a weird location. They're not by the drills. But anyway, ask them for one of these spot weld drills. Okay? That goes into the center of this thing right here. You punch a little punch, and it pushes down, and it'll drill a plug out. Okay? It'll drill a little hole like that. Now, you're not going to drill all the way through this second piece of metal because you'll notice that it'll pop loose. Once you get it pop loose, then you bolt this to the... To... this side of your core support then you can put drop your radiator in place figure out where you want scribe you a line where it needs to be okay then take it all back apart and weld it back to it now your radiator will sit back further and your bracketry will be in the right location for you okay hope that helps but that's what i would be doing i would be taking the side mounts off of this radiator and I would relocate them to wherever it is I need to sink this radiator back as far as I want it to go. Then, like you said, once you get that in there and you figure out how far back you can go, what you could do is go ahead and do a go ahead and cut that upper core support, leaving about a quarter of an inch all the way around, okay, at the front of it. Leave about a quarter of an inch of it, bolt it back in place. Then slide your radiator in as far back as you can go, leaving about an eighth of an inch so that you've got clearance that it's not touching each other. Then you'll get all the room you need to put a mechanical fan on that truck and solve your problem. Second thing here, you do not, and I'm going to say this twice, you do not put an oil cooler between the, the radiator and the engine. The oil coolers always go in front of the radiator, on this side of the radiator. If you put it on this side of the radiator, all the heat from the radiator is going into the cooler. And you're not cooling anything, you're actually heating it up. You have to put it on this side of the radiator. Never between the engine and the radiator. You're only putting heat into the cooler, not allowing the cooler to act as a cooler. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Another Rocker Pat episode of helping Mr. Andy up there at Andy's Doghouse. Uh, was there anything else that you had on that first video that I need to tell you about? Carburetor, check for vacuum leaks. Uh, that big hose you got on there, where's that going? I didn't see it in any of the pictures. Uh, but try to check for vacuum leaks and see if you don't have a vacuum leak somewhere causing that carburetor to run high. If you don't think you got one, Spray some uh, brake clean around and see if it changes the way the engine runs. Uh, if not, then make a video of it running and let me see it. Uh, another thing I remember is that on that first video, you said the heater didn't work. Well, the heater's never going to work until you put water in the system. Okay? The fan might work. Everything like that might work. But until you put water in the radiator and it's going to the heater core, you'll never get any heat, brother. It ain't going to happen. Okay? Alright, guys. Well, y'all keep rocking and rolling and rolling and rocking. And I'm going to keep grinding it down. Talk to y'all next time. Yeah, baby.